Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Tanner Hickman. I am uh, my current role uh, with Triple S Steel Supplies. I'm the vice president of safety, amongst some other things. Uh, but I've been a safety professional for about 25 years now. And it's really interesting listening to your discussion because our company has been having this discussion since about 2008. And so I'll just give you a quick version of, of how we're dealing with this. And as a matter of fact, we do have a facility there in New Jersey, and we do use this tool there in Jersey. And it sounds like from what I'm hearing, we're almost in compliance except for this wire thing, but um, we have our own wires in house already. So uh, may not need to reinvent the wheel yet. So let me let me just kind of tell you guys how, the, how our story started. So 2007, our company acquired a place up in Denver, Colorado. And in 2008, we realized that there was uh, medical marijuana was on the forefront out there. And we started noticing that we had um, applicants that were not able to uh, pass the, the the drug test because of cannabis. And, you know, we kind of looked at that. So, okay, kinda, you know, we're, things are changing. The world's moving on, what have you. Well, fast forward, to, uh, you know, about 2014-ish or so. Uh, it was very difficult to find applicants that could uh, pass the test with the cannabis uh, part. Uh, my boss, uh, who owns our company, and I started having a discussion about how we were going to deal with it. And, and he's a pretty liberal guy. He basically told me to figure out how to hire potheads. Uh, well, being from South Texas, which, by the way, I'm in Houston today. That's where I'm from. Uh, and, and being a safety professional, you're against the grain of everything I've ever known, everything I've ever uh, you know, been involved with in my entire career. So it was difficult for me to do that. Well, by 2017, we basically couldn't find anyone uh, to pass the, the drug test. And at the time, there was a study in Colorado by the, the University of Colorado that said that three out of five males between the ages of 18 and 30 ingested marijuana on a regular basis. Well, you can imagine the demographic in our steel yard of the labor force was males between the ages of 18 and 30. So that told me that three out of five of our guys were out there using marijuana, the ones, the, the ones that did get through the, the, the uh, pre-employment testing. So I started looking for a solution and all the things that you guys have been talking about, about the, the law enforcement style of detecting impairment is all good, but... It's very subjective, and when, when you you know when when you're a human being, I don't care how well you're trained or how neutral or objective you think you're being. There are things uh, in my belief that humans can be very subjective on, uh, and one of those is impairment. Um, so, as you all know, there is no universally accepted scientific way to detect someone being high on cannabis in the moment. Uh, that's a no-brainer. So my mission was very difficult. It took me about a year to come across this outfit uh, that's actually based in Colorado. The name of the company is called Predictive Safety. And they have a product called Alert Meter. And what Alert Meter is, is a, impair, it's a, it's a cognitive impairment uh, test, basically. Uh, it's like a little video game. Uh, it's, it's, it uses shape recognition amongst a whole lot of other things. It's, it's, it's a... Uh, it's a very sophisticated tool. It's it's a it's an app basically, but it's it's got a lot of science behind it. Um, and what happens is 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 this thing not only detects drug and alcohol impairment. I like to call it the impairment pie, cognitive impairment pie. Uh, there's a lot of things that will cause cognitive impairment. Drugs and alcohol is one. Another one would be fatigue, emotional stress, like you you know you uh, significant. A uh, person to you has passed away or you're having a fight with your spouse, something like that. Uh, illness can cause cognitive impairment. Uh, someone had mentioned earlier about prescription drugs. You know, sometimes doctors will give us a cocktail of prescription drugs that they don't realize is going to affect us and, and, and make us cognitively impaired. As a matter of fact, most of the time when that happens, the person who's impaired doesn't even realize they're impaired, but everybody else can see it. So this game is is very interesting so it is uh it takes about 60 to 90 seconds to play it you can play it on any device uh, uh a desktop ipad mobile phone etc you can play it anywhere that you've got an internet service it takes about 60 to 90 seconds to play it and what it does is it scores you 
on yourself. It creates a baseline. So after about 10 uh, times of playing this game, it creates a baseline on you. And as you move forward playing it, it is constantly evolving with you up to the, the past 20 times, uh, 25 times that you've played it. And at any moment in time, if you, if you play the game and you're not behaving like, like you normally do, it sends a message to your supervisor or the designated person. Maybe it's a wire up in New Jersey. And it basically says, Hey, something's going on with this guy. They're, you know, there's something they're, they're not able to focus. They may be, you know, outside of their normal range, et cetera. Uh, and what that does is that triggers in our organization now, that triggers a conversation and the employee understands that they are not allowed to go to their safety sensitive job until they have talked with the designated person. And in the beginning, you know, we really thought this was more of a drug and alcohol uh, impairment uh, uh, test. But it is it has really evolved into something a whole lot different. I, and I sincerely believe that that this company has knocked it out of the park uh, with this tool, because if you think about it from a safety perspective, it doesn't matter what the impairment is. I can tell you, I've been divorced twice, and both of those divorces were really nasty. And I can guarantee you there were times where I was more impaired than I had drank a six pack of beer. Uh, it, you know, and hopefully you guys can, can appreciate that, that a guy who's in our, in our business, he's operating a 50 ton crane. You know, if he's on his way to work this morning and his, his spouse says, you know what, when you get home this evening, all your stuff's going to be in the driveway and you can find somewhere else to live. Then he pulls into a parking place, a uh, parking spot at triple S and he's going to go operate our 50 ton crane. Is he on drugs or alcohol? No, he's not. Uh, and we'd already been, uh, training our, 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 uh, leadership uh, and supervisors on reasonable suspicion and, and trying to, you know, recognize behavior that wasn't normal. Again, very subjective way of recognizing that. So what this tool does is it raises that flag from a totally objective perspective and it gets a conversation going. It doesn't tell you what the impairment is. You do have to sit down with the individual and go through, you know, some certain steps and what we did is we molded that uh, conversation around the DOT uh, reasonable suspicion training, which we'd already been doing with our truck drivers. And we learned that when we walk into these conversations, we don't walk in there with guns blazing. Somebody mentioned an ax versus a scalpel. We, we definitely use a scalpel in these conversations. Uh, we don't go in there with our guns blazing, saying, what have you been smoking or what have you been drinking? We understand now that some of these folks are going through some really hard times. Um, so. At the end of the day, we don't use this thing as a punitive tool unless there is reasonable suspicion of drugs or alcohol involved. Every other instance, we work with the employee, and if they've got something going on in their personal life, they need to go take care of. And by the way, we don't force anyone to tell us what's going on. We just have a conversation, and we will not allow them to go to their safety-sensitive job until they can uh, play the game and, and get through it okay. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll, we'll give the, the employee uh, some light duty to do uh, and, you know, let them come back after an hour or two and try to play the game again. And if they can, if they can get through the game, uh, then we'll let them go back to their safety sensitive job because we know now that it is a sound and safe practice. When you play this game and, and you've got a good baseline, it'll let, let us know if you're impaired or if you can at least get focused enough to do your job. Um, so what we do is, is when our employees come in in the morning, they clock in, they go play this game. Uh, it takes about 60 to 90 seconds. The more you play it, the closer to 60 seconds it gets. So it's very practical. Uh, and then when they, they, they clock out for lunch and they come back from lunch, we have them play it again. We've also started using it for other safety sensitive items uh, that are jobs that we don't normally do. For example, if we've got a, a hot work uh, project going on, Everyone who's involved in it will have to play the game before we let them get involved uh, in that in that project so that we can make darn sure that everybody's focused because they don't do that kind of thing every day most of the time. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, I really believe this is the wave of the future. Uh, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. I don't think that we need cops in the workplace or anything like that. I, I think that this this needs to be one of those deals where People are going to have to understand that the green wave is coming and it's obviously already in New Jersey and there is a way to get through this. And then obviously, uh, 
this allows, you know, and this is kind of an unspoken thing, but this is allows cannabis users to use cannabis, just not at work. And we have, you know, if we, if we have a conversation and we believe that there's drugs or alcohol, we will take them down to the clinic and have them tested. And if they do test positive, then we go down that road. However, in every other instance, uh, we try to make sure that we take care of the employee. If they need some help, you know, in their personal life, what have you, we, we will uh, do whatever. I'm going to give you one example of, uh, of, of, of a story that made me truly believe in this product. And it actually happened in one of our facilities here in Houston. We had an employee come in on a Monday morning, couldn't get through the game. He went and talked to the designated person and the designated person figured out real quick that the guy was very abominable. And uh, his, it, the story was, is that his 15 year old son had been put in the hospital over the weekend with an illness and that he was basically on his deathbed. The kid was getting ready to die. So his supervisor, you know, obviously was like, well, what are you doing here? You need to be at the hospital with your family. And, and his response is very admirable. And, you know, he's the breadwinner and he needed to come to work so that he could make the money and pay the bills, et cetera. Well, obviously we are uh, not going to let him go operate that 50 ton crane in that uh, state. So we took him to the hospital and, and that evening his son passed away. Okay. Now that day, did we prevent an accident? I, you know, I can't tell you for a fact that we did, but I can tell you before we were using this product, we would have never known that that fellow was having issues because a lot of these blue collar guys, especially they come on and put their game face on and you'll never know what's going on uh, in, in, in their personal life or what have you. So um, again, this is a, an objective way to raise the, the cognitive impairment flag. Uh, and, and remember uh, this, this cannabis thing, it's, it, you know, in Colorado, I don't know if anybody's ever been to Colorado, but you go into a dispensary up there, you can ingest marijuana. You can lick it. You can drink it. You can suck it. You can smoke it. You can eat it. I mean, there's all sorts of ways that they do it up there. So it's easy to hide. Right. And if you're just depending on humans to go around and, uh, just determine if someone is impaired in the moment, it's not going to be a good thing. And, and, and the other part that I like about this is it's not an, as invasive as random drug testing. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the employees uh, in our organization uh, love it. Uh, we started using it in 2018. We now have it distributed to over 40 locations across America. We use it everywhere, even in, in states where marijuana is not legal. Okay, because we, we, we now know that it's not just a, a drug and alcohol impairment tool. Um, so anyway, that's really all I've got. I'm, I'm welcome to uh, uh, I'll answer any questions you guys have. And, and uh, hopefully my information will get pushed out there. I'm not selling this product, but I'm a big believer in it. Uh, I've got about 1,200 people that are using this every day, including myself. And, and, and we know it works. Our accidents rate uh, in 2018. Uh, the OSHA recordable recordable case rate was hovering around a 4.8. We're now we stay under one now, um, and it's not all just alert meter. There's other things in our safety program that help with that, but alert meter definitely uh, help kick the you know kick the can, so to speak. So just generally, there's a lot of different products that are out on the market, like what you described, and it sounds like you guys have some objective data in-house how does the regulator in your state deal with saying that this is a scientific reliable product uh anything that's like this is always going to be scrutinized to the scientific method it's going to be scrutinized by organizations like the ama it's going to be uh, scrutinized by osha it's what makes this a good product and where's that data stored who's evaluating it these are all questions that a regulator will want to eventually know and also beat up potentially in the courts. Um, that's what yeah, we're doing sure. right now yeah, with that's DREs. The, yeah, yeah, that's um, that's what I was going to say. It's the same with DREs. Uh, this this takes part of the human element out of it, though. It is a a, a totally objective way, and it's actually uh, the the own person, the, the the person themselves is the one who's testing themselves. And there is a lot of scientific data. I don't work for predictive safety. That would be questions for those guys. Uh, uh, they are some really smart people. Um, and I can tell you the product over time, since we've been using it since 18, 
has improved tremendously. There's there's been lots of uh, uh, add-ons and different um, things added to the algorithm that makes it even more accurate, in my opinion. Uh, but those scientific regulator type questions, I'm not that smart. I know it works, and from a practical standpoint, uh, it's 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 relatively inexpensive. It's very affordable. Uh, it's kind of like back when GPS for, first came about. It was kind of expensive, so no one used it. And eventually it got so cheap that the court started saying, well, that's gross negligence if you don't have GPS in your big truck, right? Well, I believe that this tool is going to be one of those things in the future, too. I think that it's going to be found to be uh, scientifically accurate.